Now, on the 8th of March is always a special day for the women around the world. It is a celebration of their achievements, struggles, tears, and joy. Clara Chizoba Krongborg, CEO of CCK Ventures, founder and host of Women's World Show, joins us now for more on International Women's Day. So, first of all, uh, happy International Women's Day to you, Clara. Happy International Women's Day to you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, first off, um, the International Women's Day is a day set aside, as we have just said, globally to celebrate social, economic, and political achievements of women. Do you think the Nigerian women, woman has achieved anything worthy of celebration, whether it's on the political sphere or economically? What's your thought? Absolutely, absolutely. We, Nigerian women, I am more than proud to be a Nigerian woman, especially at a time like this. Laws of Nigerian women are really important for the daily basics to fend them for themselves. You talk about the large number of women, female entrepreneurs. Let's not forget that there are a lot of women who have already led the path to where we are today. Um, just to mention only a few, Dr. Ngozi Konji, the first female and the first African woman to be, to lead a um, world trade organization. Talk about Mrs. Moab, talk about Aisha, Aisha Yusufu, and the, many of them, and rest, and so many amazing women out there, including myself, living in diaspora, doing something I truly believe in through my show, Women's World Show, and still, you know, flagging that flag, holding that flag of women empowerment, women independence, lending our voice and doing something that truly is meaningful to us. Are we there yet? No. But we are, we are really body of the celebration. Yes, we should be celebrated. Absolutely. Indeed. So despite falling behind, women are making gains globally. The theme for this year's celebration is choose to challenge. And it also stresses, you know, that from challenges comes changes. So do you think that the Nigerian woman should challenge the gender disparity, the gender bias that is prevalent in the African society? What more needs to be done? <laughs> um, I think we're already doing that. You know, because, but I think we have to be more intentional. Again, a lot of women have already led the path to where we are today. But we have to be more intentional about our actions, about our words, about our thoughts. And we have to show our capabilities. We have to engage in meaningful conversation in dialogues that really mean something to us. We have to stand out and really, you know, prepare ourselves, invest in ourselves, be the best of what we think we do, so that we can be able to demand for what we deserve. At the same time, we have to make sure that we know and we, you know, we know when to walk away. Don't settle for less. Again, we, I, I believe, again, that we as women, especially in our society, we should learn to, actually not just in our society, we should learn to see the next woman not as our competition, but our, as our uplifter to see us together, to be united in one as women. We have to learn to say, yes, I got to go, come, we can do this together. I think the equality that we all are fighting for can only be achieved if we are united as women and our boys are in uniform. So, but we are already doing that gradually, but we need to be more intentional. Farah, what would you say is the most pressing need for women world over? Uh, of course, you can bring it down to Africa, where we are here. Hmm. Yes, being a Nigerian woman, I grew up in Nigeria, I grew up in Onitra to be precise. Um, first of all, I will start, there are a lot of factors, but I will start with the basic parenting. Because um, I think it just, it's not a duty of a woman alone to parent. So hence it's the only family that has to, because in Africa we know that once you have a child, everybody is involved. But parenting is really vital at this role. We have to make sure that we are, you know, parenting in gen um, a, a, a equal gender roles. Every parent, every child needs to understand that it's not only the duty of a girl child to clean or to cook, 
It's not only the duty of a boy to make the money of and paying for her family. It has to be on an equal level. So this is the first step that we need to implement in our society, in Nigeria, in Africa as well. Again, talk about in financial independence, and that is where I will put it in empowered women should empower women. If you are already in the position of, you can take up mentorship, mentor some young people, guide them, coach them, show them ways not to make the same mistake that you have made. This is also what I believe in. This is I think a lot of women out there that are already lead, that has led the path for us have done or they are still doing. But we should be more intentional about doing things like this. And uh, for example, let me say for example, in women's world show we have making up entrepreneur, we empower skilled African women. I travel from here and partner with companies, organizations from here and travel to Africa to empower skilled African women. We need to invest in our young women allow them, teach them to be financially independent. But when a woman is financially independent, she can do so much, so much, and her voice is even louder. So I think there are so many factors to this, but these are my two basic factors. Parenting and women, empower, uh, women empowerment. Okay, Chizova, um, I was struck by uh, a bit of what I read about you. Um, you said, you know, when you used to live in an unfinished building that wasn't painted, um, but somehow you use the gift of the gab. What does that say and how would you use that to encourage other women who sometimes feel at a disadvantage, but rather than using that, uh, are hiding because of it? I think also if you, if you look back to how it felt for you during the challenge, you, know, you know how you are feeling in the position where you are, the challenges you're facing. Try to imagine yourself, if you can imagine a life outside where you are, then that makes it possible for you to keep trying, for you to keep pushing to be better. So for me, it was that fear of knowing that oh, it's not a place I belong. I tried to imagine, I, re I read books, I watched, as in, of course, movies, and I know there's a life out there. I knew that there's something better out there. Hence why I kept striving to say, I want more, I want more, I want more, and I, I went for it. So any young girl out there today having a difficult time, imagine a life outside your comfort zone. There is so much more, so much more out there. All right, uh, Clara, uh, Kamala Harris, Ngozi Okonji, well, uh, you have Amina Mohammed, and there's Christian Lagarde. Zainab Ahmed, our own finance minister down here in Nigeria. These are women occupying positions that is regarded, if you like, as the birthright of men. Is the world, do you think, beginning to experience a paradigm shift? If so, how can this be sustained? Can you repeat that question again, please? I was talking about women in positions uh, that... Uh, before you could say we're well, men's birthright, like, yeah, why you have Ngozi Okoje while now the WTO, you have Amina Mohammed, a deputy a UN secretary, and then of course you have Kamala Harris, uh, yeah. uh, 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 the, the uh, vice president, vice president of, of United States of America. Then you have the finance minister here. I'm saying, do you think we're beginning to experience a paradigm shift? If so, how can this be sustained? Absolutely. I think we're already having a shift. I think we are having that shift already. And to sustain it is another conversation because it's important for young people. Again, it goes back to young people really seeing, looking up to those people who are already there, positioning ourselves, our position of skills, position, getting better in what we are doing, putting ourselves in place of opportunities and possibilities. You know, being able to say, this is what I can do, and I want to show you what I can do. So we, I think sustainability is, is absolutely possible, but we have, we have to do the work by really saying, I can do this, be prepared for it, and grab the opportunity once it comes up. So this way, um, to men also need to be taught that this opportunity is not, this thing has to continue. It, it, it really has, to, it shouldn't be a force of, okay, it's only with the women, that it's only the men position. The men also have to create room for everyone, the young boys, people, and all of us need to be aware and educated in this part. 
Well, thank you very much, Clara Chisoba-Kronberg, for your time. And once again, happy International Women's Day to you.